Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. This is the best of the Dan Levator Show with the Stuttgart's podcast. All right, let's see where this ends up today. This, right. one, this one should be fun. Um, this week has been a stressful one for me personally for a variety of different reasons, and so I have been uh, more emotional than I would usually be. I have largely not been terribly emotional my entire life. Uh, maybe that's why I'm fat. <laughs> All those repressed feelings. Uh, like, And so this week has been an emotional one, so I want to discuss everything that happened yesterday, probably for the length of the show with brief intermissions for to talk to Chris Sims and Big Boy. Because I want and to pick out of a bucket of death as well, because Mina tried to slither her way out of that yesterday. And so oh, we're going yeah. to so bring her in by phone to to do the bucket of death with everybody. The last one of the year. And so this is our last show of the year. We disappear after this. So this is going to have some mailing into it and depending mailing it in to it. And depending on how it goes, maybe it just like is the last show forever. Like, depending on how it goes, right? Like, it might be right. the last show of the year, or it just might be the last show forever because this has been unpleasant. For both of us? Or? No, I mean, I don't know. We got <laughs> we got to figure stuff out. Yeah. Um, but so be careful, man. Yeah, so here's where we are. So here's where we are. Yesterday on the show, the commissioner of baseball came on, and my tone was bad, as it often is around here, which is why I get fined $5 for tone. And I was too emotional and I should have just pounded the facts instead of doing any pounding of the table. But the reason that that happened, just so you know, it was a very contentious interview and ESPN has partnerships with baseball and you do that to somebody in public. It doesn't feel like being a very good partner. Rob Manfred is used to safe spaces with his interviews. He d he's probably never done an interview quite like that. one. And I do give him credit because I think he knew what he was getting into yesterday and still agreed to do the interview. I give him right. credit. For yes, doing I that. do give him credit yeah. for that, too. I do. I, he should have either gotten better PR advice or been better at PR because he came at me at the start to bully me. Yep. And um, and then it got bad from right right from there because i happen to know some things that he doesn't know that i know because i'm a reporter and journalist first not a just a gas bag though i've become a carnival barker and so i'm not going to be flipping about the things that i say but some mistakes are going to be made when you handle un uncomfortable situations four hours a day and so my tone was bad but i did my job yesterday and we did our job yesterday the job that i was entrusted to do by this company the job i've always wanted to do for this city that i love it's always been my dream so we did our job yesterday, uncomfortable though it was. But one of the funny things that happens here is when you get the commissioner angry, you're partnered with the sport. You're in a business together. We support baseball. Like, we've got contracts with baseball. This is a very powerful person who oversees those contracts. We're trying to do journalism with the conflict of interest that ESPN has between business and journalism and entertainment all the time. So here's where we get to. Let's, you saw, you heard in his okay bye yesterday or whatever he said, you heard as soon as he got off the phone that this commissioner was angry. All right, bye. Like you heard it during the interview. He's like, I'm not going to be deposed. I'm not going to sit here and have you call me a liar, but I've seen paperwork and Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald, a r respectable newspaper went on Spain and Fitz last night and he did more reporting on this than even I have done. On this. And so here's what happened yesterday, just so you understand if you weren't a part of anything that happened yesterday. It's Fritz. That's a fun. All right. I deserve that. Yep. You do. It's Fritz. Yep. Was it, isn't there a Fitz somewhere? There is, but Sarah was doing the show with someone named Fritz. But isn't there a Fitzsimmons right after that? I'm sorry. Bad information. It's Fitz. No fine. Hmm. Wow. Whose fault is that? I don't know. Not mine, though. Well, I mean, you were there to find me. Like, you were, you got in there right. I mean, nobody else gave me that information other than you. But Mike said it in my ear. That's a fine. Yeah, I owe some money here. Unfortunately, <laughs> I don't have any. <laughs> it's also a fine. No, I really don't have any today. <laughs> but that's also a fine. If you say you don't have any and then reach in and we see that you do have any, then Nothing. it becomes... Somebody come in here and search his pockets. What? Somebody come in here and search. I'm going to go. I, don't make me do it. I'll oh, go in. Oh, man. I just found a 20 spot. All right. So that's $3. That's so, another fine. Right. Stu Gatz gets. Yes. Yeah, Off of your bad information. You have a bunch of 50s. He gave me bad information. You keep blaming him. Those are all fines. We're up to five. 
Tone! No, I haven't done anything yet. We've got we've got measures in place today. Mike, what are some of the measures in place today for when my tone gets bad? We're actually going to reel you in. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a big rod if we need it. <laughs> a big rod. You're fighting a big fish, but it's weak. It, it's a fat fish, but it doesn't have any strength or fight in it. It's just a grouper or a flounder. <laughs> It'll just flop around on your desk and ask you for a drink and some cheese. It's not a tough fight for this fish. It'll just eat and then die. <laughs> All right, back to uh, Barry Jackson, who was on with Fritz and Sarah Spade last night. <laughs> All right, that's not the name of the show. It's Sarah Spade. I don't know what the name of the show is. It's Spain and Fitz. And so Barry Jackson was on. And so this is what happened yesterday. If you're not familiar with what happened yesterday, this is the whole backstory. So it's been an emotional week for me. The commit, we've been for weeks wanting to smoke out uh, Bruce Sherman and the powerful people who made this decision to bleep South Florida again with taxpayer money. And as this becomes something that is argued about all over the network, I want everyone to understand, I don't care about whether Giancarlo Stanton was traded. This is not me whimpering because the MVP of the league got traded for something that didn't have money or it just didn't make sense in terms of how you would treat this fan base to send away to pay someone to take your MVP. But that part of it stinks, but that's not what you're mad about. No, that's and, not what and, you're worried and, about. And not only that, but we can get into a good argument about whether the rebuilding ways are sure. are good or bad. That's not the conversation I'm interested in. What happened yesterday is I believe that Rob Manfred, Derek Jeter, and everyone who's ever done business with the Marlins in South Florida as owners of the business in South Florida, so this includes Lori and Sampson, and I've yelled at Sampson plenty about this over the years. I believe, and and by the way, Lori and Sampson are the ones who did what they did to the Expos. What I am fearing is that we've built a stadium in the only city I've ever loved for a sport that in 20 years is going to move and then blame us for not supporting it when it's been them that four times has betrayed and angered this fan base because the business structure is every time the business is not working, go bleep South Florida. Mm -hmm. And so if Jeter fails, it's going to be done, dude. Right. It's going to be if Jeter fails in a public way where they can't fix this and contractually because I've seen the documents and so has now Barry Jackson of the Miami Herald. This is in place. I've seen the documents. Jeter's contract clauses and and the commissioner of baseball didn't know I knew this yesterday. And when we got him in the middle of it with it, his answer was one of those deposition. I don't recall. He didn't know that I knew that there was a clause in that contract that specifically plays pays Jeter for profit for not making cash calls with his investors like he is contractually baseball signed off on that. And so what I'm worried is they're all conspiring so that if it fails again, they can blame us and we will be the Expos. Right. They'll blame us. We'll be left without a team and three different ownership groups will have made a lot of money. That's right. The mistake, whatever, they're running their business well, but literally at the expense of the customers down here. So anyways, so with all of that as context, we start the interview and the commissioner tries to bully me. He, He comes in interrupting me because he's used to soft interviews yeah he'll never be on the show again we might have damaged the relationship with espn for all i know like i don't know if you could rest i don't think he'll ever come on here again i think that his okay bye or, or thanks bye is the final time we will ever hear from rob manfred on this show that was forever all right bye <laughs> yes i think that was a final goodbye <laughs> And I want Bruce Sherman on here to answer some of these same questions. I'm going to send hip hop hot dogs to his house and everywhere else to try and get him to answer. Like we are now going to put, we are, we have done. And I, I was not looking to get the commissioner to embarrass himself. And I certainly wasn't looking to embarrass myself for this network. I simply wanted answers to difficult questions. And so the beginning part of that interview was not me grandstanding. It was not me use. It was me emotional and bothered. And then the first question I asked the commissioner, he won't answer it. He won't give me a yes or no answer. And then when he does answer it, the thing that he says, I know to not be true. And so that's where we're starting. And that's what happened. And that's where it escalated. I He thought I was just a radio gas bag. He did not think that I actually knew and had facts. And so here is Barry Jackson on Spain and Fitz giving you the facts. He was totally aware of it, and I think he was disingenuous in his interview with Dan Levitard today. Now, you could parse words and say that 
Uh, Manfred was correct in saying he did not know that the Marlins specifically would trade Stanton, Gordon, and Ozuna. But for him to suggest that he was unaware that there would be significant payroll slashing is simply not accurate because in order for Jeter and his business partner, Bruce Sherman, to get the team, they prepared this document, uh, which was called the uh, Project Wolverine, for reasons unknown. And this document was circulated (laughs) to potential investors, several of whom ended up investing. And it specifically said that under his plan, payroll would be cut from $115 million last season to $90 million this year. So major league owners were aware of this financial plan. So was Rob Manfred. This came up during the approval process. So for the commissioner, and with all due respect to him, but for him to go on Levitard's show today and say that he was unaware of this plan uh, simply rings not accurate to me. And so he, I should have said it that way. I mean, Barry just I, I, no, rushed. No, but it, I should have said it that way. It would have, yeah. but it would. But here's the here's my objection. Here's my objection. If I had said it that way, that interview wouldn't have been what it was. And this this is where my objection lies. Okay, so now I've caused a problem between ESPN and the Commissioner of Baseball, where they have a business partnership, and I could see where that would, would create some discomfort for ESPN, for Manfred, and for me. But what I'm telling you about everything involved here is, man, ESPN enjoyed the holy hell out of that content, though. Enjoyed the holy hell out of it. Ate it up. Swallowed it up. But didn't like how it felt. And that's journalism. Like, we got at the truth, and it was deeply uncomfortable. And I still fear that they're going to treat the Marlins like the Expos. And nothing that happened yesterday dissuaded me of that. Maybe they rebuild in a way that is successful and brings fans. But if they don't, the fail-proof method that allows Lori to buy in for $10 million and cash out at $1.2 billion, is South Florida gets bleeped and bleeped and bleeped again. And the most powerful man in that sport, or the commissioner of that sport, the face and the voice of that sport, came on this show to answer difficult questions yesterday and started with something that wasn't true. And that journalism is about getting at the truth. And that's where all of that went off the rails. It's not me being a crybaby. It's not like I... I could have done this to Manfred yesterday and just done a radio wacky hijink show where we're just playing Lane Kiffin, uh, you know, imitating Al Davis. He's a liar. Like I could have done that all show. I would have had great fun doing just setting off bombs because I don't, I, I my relation, I, I want to treat people with respect, but if you're going to come and bleep my city as a powerful person, like, uh, you know, and then lie and then not be accurate and then not be accurate. He's a liar. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. Let's not call him a liar. He's a liar. No! <laughs> no! No! He's a liar. No! That, no, reel me in. Reel me in! <laughs> I don't want to be calling anybody a liar. But some of that stuff that happened yesterday didn't smell right. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Last year, over 3 million drivers switched to Progressive. Call or click today and find out if you can save. Here's your Sports Center update. A semi truck hauling a large trash bin crashed and plunged into the swimming pool of the home owned by Trailblazers guard Evan Turner. Slow time in sports, huh? Cam Newton says that he doesn't believe Jerry Richardson should sell the team and will stand by him until all the allegations are proven. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. It is Dan and Stu from the Clevelander in South Beach on ESPN Radio. Catch me and Mike Gola Jr. every Sunday for weekend observations from 7 to 9 a.m. Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. 30 for 30 podcasts have returned. These are stories you just have to hear to believe. Subscribe right now in the Listen tab of the ESPN app or Apple Podcast brought to you by the City Double Cash Card. All right, so we try to be transparent with the audience with varying degrees of success about how we do this show, where we do this show. So, And I find all of this, the intersection of power and money and um, journalism and networks in bed with the people they cover because we have business transactions, I find all of this fascinating, but it's complicated, okay? And so... Many of you are calling me many names today, which you're calling me a crybaby. You think I'm arguing about whether or not the rebuilding ways of the Marlins are the right way to do it. Trade an MVP. I'm not arguing about a traded right fielder. I'm not arguing about whether it's better to do it the way the Astros or the Cubs do. Everyone gets stuck on that. The thing I am arguing against is that I have seen paperwork, and now Barry Jackson has seen it too. Project Wolverine. They named it after a 
superhero who slashes. I asked the commissioner of baseball, were you aware that there was going to be slashing Project Wolverine? He was not aware that they were going to be slashing. It didn't ring true. It rings damn near impossible. It rings damn near impossible. Do you know that to be a fact? Project Wolverine? The Wolverine part, yeah. Which part? That Wolverine is a slashing superhero? Yeah, and no, that's I, why they named no, it? No, because I don't were, know was, that. It was no, symbolism? No, no, no. Barry, that's uh, why Barry Jackson uh, has been more reasonable about this when he says uh, Project Wolverine for reasons unknown. <laughs> but what else? <laughs> what? Well, Any, I mean, Gene is a Michigan some, guy. Okay, let me hear some Michigan. other theories. Okay, maybe. Okay, is that it? I would. Do you think they named it for a superhero that <laughs> slashes or because he went to Michigan. Put it on the poll. <laughs> Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Did Derek Jeter? I mean, it is. Well, but wait a minute. It uh, so they didn't realize that that Operation Wolverine was named after a superhero who slashes. It's Project Wolverine. That's a fun. Although Operation Wolverine makes it seem so much more. <laughs> you, know what? Is, yes. you know what? No fine. You know, no you made fine. The name better. Well, made it better. No, no, but here's the thing. No, but, I'm no, going to give you money. No, but here's the thing that's happening here. No, 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 no. Here's the thing that's happening here. Manfred's coming on here and saying, no, 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 no I didn't know about Operation Wolverine, and I, I don't recall the details of Operation Wolverine. And I, or, or Project Wolverine. Operation Either is, yeah, No, yeah, no, it's, it's fine. not fine because this is an important distinction because all, right. all Manfred was doing with us yesterday was trying to do lawyer talk on semantics. That's all he was trying to do. So maybe he does think, maybe that's the disconnect between he and I, <laughs> that he thinks Plan Wolverine is such a simple thing that just is about Jarek Jeter going to Michigan and running his business. And I think, no. This is you and him in cahoots on Operation Wolverine, which is the slash me in my city. Knock it off. Yesterday, I listened back to it, and I was made a little bit more uncomfortable. I, I truly think that we aired and not uh, right off the bat saying that uh, you're a respected journalist. I, I, well, he should probably know that. No, no. no see, there that's was a, some, That's no, quite what? the assumption, no, man. That is a, that Guys, is, he's the commissioner of Major no, League Baseball. No, he has people around God. him. They well, know Dan. I mean, no, come on. I can't assume that. I, I can't assume that. Look, man, the first question I asked him, the reason I asked it, I knew what the truth was there. But I asked him so he would have to tell me what the truth was. That's why I asked him. We were almost better served by him not knowing that I was a ju- if he didn't know that I'm somebody who's not going to just gas bag. Right. But to I think the majority of the audience and uh, most dangerously to him, it just sounded like you were calling him a liar without right. knowing. Right. That and that's the problematic part. But what I would say to you and why is pro- it's problematic, it's uncomfortable. And I have my regrets about that for a variety of different reasons. But the end result This is the conflict that we're dealing with. The end result was really good for me and us and ESPN and Miami. And the end result was not good for Rob Manfred. But here's the difficult part. Damn straight. It was good for ESPN. And ESPN shouldn't be made uncomfortable by that. That's the way ESPN should be doing business. Demand once more money. It's almost the reason that we were hired, you got. It's almost the reason we were hired to shake some of these cages and, and cause some of these things because that's how ESPN, ESPN should be making content like that. We're not in bed with these people. I mean, they're partners of ours. I, I mean, know. We're paying I, them a good deal I know, but we're pretending to be a journalism company. And while right. I didn't handle the journalism perfectly yesterday, journalism was being done there. You still have time to give yourself or your loved one a new phone from Metro PT. P- Sorry about that. That's all right. It's a fun. It's Metro PCS, not Pete. All right. Tell them about Metro Pete. I mean, yo. That is a fine. Here. I'll I pay mean. the fine. Switch to Metro PCS and enjoy Amazon Prime for an entire year when you get a free Samsung Galaxy J7 Prime and an unlimited LTE plan. It's fine, man. You know anymore. No, I owe a fine. I owe a emotional week for you, man. I owe a fine. I paid it. Uh, uh, A dollar. Uh, I put a 20 spot in there. Anyway, you'll enjoy thousands of movies, TV shows, music, free two-day shipping, and much more. Don't miss out on this incredible holiday deal. Metro PCS. Wireless figured out during congestion, a fraction of customers using more than 35 gigs a month may notice reduced speed. Sales tax not included in phone price. Excludes numbers on the T-Mobile network. See stores for details, terms, and conditions. One year of Amazon Prime has a $99 value. If sex were a show, that would be us.
ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. The Dan Lebitard Show is brought to you by Pennzoil Synthetics, taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. Make the switch to Pennzoil Synthetics today. Guests on the Dan Lebitard Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Here's your Sports Center update. A semi truck calling a large trash bin crashed and plunged into the swimming pool of the home owned by Trailblazers guard Evan Turner. Cam Newton says that he doesn't believe Jerry Richardson should sell the team and will stand by him until all of the allegations are proven. And finally, loud Mexican fish orgies could be causing dolphins to go deaf. No matter what your budget is, take the JCPenney Holiday Challenge and find surprising gifts at even more surprising prices. Save on toys, apparel, and name brand gifts your family will absolutely love. Come into the store or go online. It's jcp.com and get everything on your list for less than you think. J.C. Penny for all the latest headlines and information. Tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. All right, Mike, let's walk the, some of this back here. Let's go ahead and uh, bring the fishing reel out um, and and walk me back some on some of this because this is going to be an interesting day. Whoa. This is going to be an interesting day around here in its entirety. Because, Big haul because I am going to stay in this uncomfortable space. Stugat. Yes, big haul. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stay in this uncomfortable space the entire show because I want and I and and it's fine. I, I suggest that you leave if that's not what you want. I understand if that's not what you want. You may be tired of all this. But what I'm telling you is that I'm going to sink into this all show because I want to force the national audience on ESPN's platform to look at what is happening in South Florida right. in a way that makes the powerful uncomfortable i want everyone to see it clearly and we're going to make some mistakes as we do that and one of the mistakes that i wish to correct is i was not calling rob manfred a liar you know the precedent at this company bill simmons got gone it was the last straw with bill simmons right he was fired i understand what this company is working worried about because the punishment system is different for everybody and they can't have the idea of a mutiny and you've got like i understand that some of what's arriving on my doorstep in terms of discomfort uh with the people that i work with if you're armed with facts and you and a question is asked and it's answered and you don't feel like the person is telling the truth no. you, you you can call that out without saying correct. it's not an overall correct. hey he's a liar correct correct, correct. but there, but we're parsing semantics okay because rob manfred like that interview went off the rails because that's how rob manfred he thought i was calling him just to his face on national radio as a guest of the show to start out the interview, a liar. Rob, were you aware of Jeter's plan to trade players and slash payroll? You know, it's interesting. Um, yes or no, please? Don't. Yes or no, please? Uh, you know, I- I'm happy to do yes or no's. You can add, you can I'm elaborate afterward. I just want to know if you were aware but, of that plan. Like you appro- if you Did you approve a plan that had slash payroll again we, for South we Florida? Do, we do not approve... Um, operating decisions by any ownership, Rob, new owners, Rob. current owners or not. Rob. And as a result, the answer to that question is no. I'm not going to be deposed like this is some adversary thing. You want to ask me questions, I'll answer them the way that I want to answer them. Okay, but if that's, that's not fine. good enough, we can move on. No, that's fine. I'll do it that way. But you can't come. You're coming on here and saying that you weren't aware of Jeter's plan to trade players and slash payroll like we're starting with a lie rob like that's where we're starting like you, you know, can't I'm tell not me you're not aware of that and have you call me a liar i explain to you that we do not we do not get involved in operating level decisions in the ownership process the ownership approval process clubs make those local decisions rob were you made themselves. were you aware of his plan though were you no. aware of it no. All right. So we finally got him to know. Mm-hmm. So now what you have is the admission publicly that the commissioner, by saying no to that, right. didn't know that selling an alleged bad business for $1.2 billion to a shortstop didn't know any of what that shortstop had planned. Think about that for a second. Crazy. Now, I know ESPN doesn't want me to call the commissioner of the league, a liar. But let let that sink in for a second. The commissioner of baseball is telling you that he sold a $1.2 billion franchise that we're all being told is a bad business to a shortstop who doesn't know what he's doing and has no experience with this without ever asking him 
what the plan looked like when I happened to know that he saw that plan. I know it because of the sources that I've talked to. So that's where we are. I don't want to call him names. I never called him a liar. I said, we're starting with a lie, with something that's not true. Right. Like, and we can parse semantics on all of that, but we started, we started the interview with A, him getting angry, B, him trying to bully me, and then starting the interview by telling me something that I know to not be true based on documents and journalism I've done. That's where we started. Now, the company and Manfred and baseball can, and Bugshambi and Max Kellerman, they can all put that on me. And they're all, every last one of them is wrong. Every last one of them is wrong. We did our job yesterday. We did journalism yesterday. We tried to make it funny. Mm-hmm. There Thank was, you. There was something funny about it? or We tried to make it good and funny around it. But yes, this gets me hot and it gets me agitated because I missed the funny. I, I, I sound, I sound, I sound bad in discussing it because I'm passionate. I care about these things. I care about journalism and I care about this city and I'm mad at everybody. And, and Manfred came on here and he was mad too. And so I, I would ask you, commissioner, while not calling you any names, for the love of God, please do your job better. Because you're hurting people down here who care about something. Like, you came on here yesterday and you told South Florida something that wasn't true. And the reason that I did that is because I wanted to get someone in power in front of everybody so that they know that baseball is working this the same way they did the Expos. This is how the the Expos had contract clauses. I know this because Samson and Loria got this team because of it. They they bought in for ten million dollars or twelve million dollars and cashed out for one point two billion while doing everything wrong. Because baseball's got a foolproof business plan that continues to screw my city, and I'm asking the commissioner and baseball to stop that, even if it risks them embarrassment. I'm sorry. You were embarrassed yesterday. I didn't want to do that to Rob Manfred. That's not what I wanted. I just wanted him to answer the questions honestly. If you didn't see a plan, how do you not ask for a plan? And if you did see the plan, how do you not ask them, hey, how do you plan on getting payroll down to $85, $90 million? But, but, What's the plan for that? But, you have to ask, but, especially in this city with this team, with this market. You have to ask that. Okay, but I, I'm interested in discussing, right? This is what I'm interested in discussing. This is the part behind the scenes that I think people would find fascinating. The way journalism works, the way ESPN works, the way business works, the idea of conflict of interest is the media changes all around us throughout America and fake news and everyone questions journalism and everything else. We are in bed with baseball in a partnership. I was stunned a couple of years ago when this company in bed with football financially just went after Goodell in a way that was every show, every network. And I remember saying at the time, who ordered that? Like, how did that happen where we all had permission to just set fire to the commissioner and call for his firing when we're in business with this? And so I understand who we're bleeping with here. This is a powerful person with power at the company. Um, You know what I mean? Because he, yeah. he's got a business arrangement with the company. And he, he's running a powerful business. And he's running a powerful business in which he gives a $1.2 billion franchise to a shortstop and doesn't ask him questions. All right. I'm not, I am not, I am not going to sit here and treat that with kid gloves. Like I'm just not. And neither should this company. That's what I'm saying. And so now we find an interesting fight here where let's make some people uncomfortable. And I'm not just talking about Manfred here. I'm talking about inside our building. Let's make people uncomfortable because this work, when done well, that's what it does. And it may end up in me getting blowtorched and just finished and our career ending, but let's make people uncomfortable. It's the job. You're making me uncomfortable. I'm making myself uncomfortable. Well, let's stop. Awkward transition. I like my job. Time for some ads. And here's the reason we do it for 1-800-Flowers. It's the reason we exist. Yes. 
Like this stuff. This is why we do it. ESPN, it's all over the networks. The content that uh, that is objectionable from yesterday. All over the network. Sponsored by 1-800-Flowers. Have you potentially ruined a corporate sponsorship? We'll send some 1-800-Flowers. That's flowers. right. Yeah. What, what happens when you've nuked your relationship with baseball? Send 1-800-Flowers. And right now, great deal. When you order the beautifully crafted holiday flower tree, you'll get 20% off. That's a hand-designed 1-800-Flowers Holiday Flower Tree, 20% off right now. The Holiday Flower Tree is elegantly designed with fragrant greenery, roses, mini carnations, and a merry red bow on top, making it a truly one-of-a-kind gift. Perfect for spreading joy in your own home or in the homes of your friends and family just in time for Christmas. 1-800-Flowers works with premier farms around the world to ensure you get the best flowers available for the best price available. 20% off the gorgeous 1-800-Flowers Holiday Flower Tree is an amazing offer, but you have to hurry. The offer ends Friday. To get the gorgeous Holiday Flower Tree for 20% off, it's simple. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, enter code DAN. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code DAN. But you better hurry again. The offer ends on Friday. Ho, ho, ho. Happy holidays from the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Don't forget, you can hear more of my son's Dan and his two weekdays. Starting at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPNU. Hi, everyone. Stu Gatz here. Support for the Dan Lebitard Show podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you are confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, and your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you the same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you are getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz. That's rocketmortgage.com slash Stugatz, S-T-U-G-O-T-Z. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states. NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Pick from a range of coverage options with the Name Your Price tool to find a price that works for you. Guests on the Dan Levitar Show appear via the Shell Penzo performance line. Here's your Sports Center update. By the way, I should have said this before. We're going to the bucket of death this uh, segment. Yes. So we're going to the bucket of death. I have not said that. I should have said it. My bad. Well, now it's been said. The Wofford Terriers shock number five, North Carolina, 79 to 75, snapping the Tar Heels 23 game home winning streak. LeVar Ball said he is launching a basketball league for nationally ranked high school graduates who don't want to go to college. I love that guy. That is a good idea. That's funny. That's a good that's, idea, man. That's funny. It's a good idea. And finally, in a Christmas miracle, Liam Gallagher took to Twitter on Wednesday and shared with the world that he reached out to his brother, Noel, whom he repeatedly called a potato and declared that they are all good now. All right. That's nice. That's, That's what the long, holidays do. They bring long, people together. Long time coming. Or tear families apart because they have to spend time together. That's too. For all the latest headlines and information, tune to the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. All right. We have to go to the bucket of death. But LeVar Ball, that's an interesting story. LeVar Ball, man, you can dislike a lot of things about his style. But I love people who dream big. I, I mean, he is. He has dreamed. He has dreamed his sons into mattering. I'd watch that, man. Like, you have all guys who think they can make it to the NBA, don't want to be exploited by Kansas or UCLA or Kentucky or the NCAA. They don't don't want to do the fraud and justice. Like, I love the idea of everything you just said there. Somebody, now he's a very bad person to do it because as we've seen from ordering his shoes and getting a different brand (laughs) seven months later, he might have some organizational problems in terms of building a business. Consumer confidence would not be very high. I guess because it's become so normal. I guess I'm cool with kids not finishing college. Kids not finishing high school feels a lot different to me. Mm-hmm. And this oh, could but I thought, go very oh, no, wrong. but I missed that. I thought it was people who had finished high school. I missed that part. I thought it was people who wanted no. a safe haven between high school and college. Guys, it's nationally ranked high school graduates okay. who don't want to attend college. Okay, because the first report that I saw was high school prospects. Like initially, I thought the whole design behind this was for his son who was a junior. I hope he gets money behind him so, so that someone else can exploit all of this instead of college sports. 
I hope that some. I hope he gets a big investor, like somebody who actually believes in that. So we and can these kids it. stop going to Kentucky and Duke. Yeah, and just end stop up going that. To this stop league. making. Yes. Stop making money for Calipari. Make some of the money for yourself. Well, yes. not only, yeah, make money for the kids. Exactly. What, what's going to make me feel uneasy is when kids that are freshmen in high school start getting their GEDs to participate in. Right. No. That, look, and you can't have Lavar Lavar Ball running all that stuff. But I wish that a credible person who was actually interested in kids and social injustice and the exploitation that goes on in college would rattle the cages on the idea of, well, they get an education. No, you don't want an education? Here, come play. Come play in America. Not Lithuania, not 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 Europe. Here, come play in America because it's got American backing. Patino so getting a job in that league. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And I'd welcome it. Yeah. So would I. Yeah. Yeah, let's, let's have a league of Lane Kiffin. Let's just call the dirty thing what it is <laughs> and enjoy that. That's why I, I read those reports about McMahon and the XFL, like he that he's again getting that urge. Oh, look at these namby pamby conservatives. Let's play some real football. <laughs> like he he got it a one, it, it failed, and now he wants in the game again because he's like, man, they got even more namby pamby. <laughs> like I was trying to do this twenty years ago, but he's gonna up his game. Yeah, I think like yeah, even right, crazier right. football. Like I'm yes. saying, I want more Vince McMahon's. I want more Levar Balls. <laughs> It'd be better if they were looked and acted like Jeter for like the credibility of your business. But I want the messy ones. Anyways, let's go to There's the... There's an absolute opening here. Oh, yeah. Yes. It's a good idea. Yeah, I just is. don't think he's the person to execute it, but we will see. By the way, Mina Kimes escaped the bucket yesterday, but we're not letting her escape the bucket today. She's on the phone, and when it's her turn, we'll uh, run the picks. Didn't I hear you All calling right. her a Jezebel before? She is a Jezebel. Because right. she tried to get out of this? Mina, you're a Jezebel. Well, well, can you hear me? Bah, bah, bah. I didn't try to. It's not my fault you didn't do your job and ask me to do the button. You told me last night you thought about reminding me, and then you didn't. That's true. <laughs> okay, see, that's all we want around here is some honesty. If Manfred had handled it that way, none of none of that would have happened yesterday. <laughs> Jezebel. Jezebel. All right, so Guillermo's going first. Or no, Mina's going to go first. Or who, who's picking four? You're going to pick? Who's gonna uh, pick? Let's have uh, Billy go first. And, right. uh, when it works uh, its way uh, over here, then I'll pick for Mina. Okay. Uh, so Guillermo is terrible this season. He is seven and eight. If He's you don't know really how bad. this works, hold on a second, Guillermo. Did you just get the golden helmet of life? And it's over for this season, though. Right. This is the last one. This you is just the got last week. You just got Carrie's the golden over. helmet of life. Carries over. Well, well, hold on. Does he get the first two weeks? Be a swap. Off? Yeah. Let's be real. No, no, There's no, no. going to be a swap. He, here. Okay. he gets the first two weeks of next season. Um, Dan, can you explain the game? Now I was that? just going to do that. Yes, thank you, Mike. But that thank counts. You. That does count for Guillermo. Yes, it counts, even though I had not explained the game and he went early. And and he told you not to. And I asked you not to. And under some circumstances, you pulling. Do we have the imaging for the Golden Helmet of Life? Do we have the imaging for that? I wasn't ready because right. the game hadn't been Right, the game hadn't yet. begun and Billy ah. picked early and he's been terrible this year. And it would be kind of appropriate if 7-8 and eight Billy, who's been worse at this than any of this us this year, if he picked the Golden Helmet of Life, finally got something good out of that bucket, and then it was immediately nullified because he didn't follow the rules that only Mike knows. Seconds buffering. All right, that's okay. But the Explain golden the helmet of life, right. we really, Billy, yeah, and two dollars, please, two dollars. Like you botched this so many different ways. You do, I, no, there are people right now listening who have no idea what we're doing because I haven't gotten a chance to explain the game. And you just reach into a bucket, and what should have been the highest moment of the holidays, where you feel joy and we celebrate, instead has turned into a controversy because there's nothing holy in that bucket. The golden helmet of life. The golden helmet of life. The golden helmet of life. <laughs> All right. So that must be very confusing to you if you're not familiar with our show and everything that happened. Can't imagine why. But, uh, because of Billy. That's why. And we need to call the commissioner to see if this stands. Because I don't think he should. I, I, well, I'm, I, I want to get I'll it to I'll put it back. You want me to put it back? No, put I don't want you to put it back. Um, uh, but we've got to check in with Sarah Spain now at the end, at, at the end of this. Um, so. This is the game. There is a bucket. It, today, it's a Halloween bucket, and it's got helmets in it, and it, it corresponds with football games played this weekend. And if we get that team, we lose. We have to do something shameful like th there was the possibility yesterday that we could have been having that moment with Rob Manfred, and Stugatz would have had either his hands covered in 10 candy pop rings or a toga outfit or i'm wearing a straight jacket or a straight jacket or there was one a narwhal horn i think you owe a narwhal horn on the forehead yep i lost last week i chose i didn't lose i took the bucket of death money which was about 42 dollars and because i took it i have to wear the narwhal oh narwhal and it's narwhal and, and that's a fun 
<laughs> it's not a narwhal. It's a narwhal. It's a narwhal. And uh, are you guys sure? I'm positive. Yes, one one thousand percent. Yeah. Okay. Fine. All right, uh, Roy. Time for you to pick, please. Roy, as uh, the Grim Reaper is here now, it is uh, time for Roy to select. Now that we have explained the game, and Billy's golden helmet of life has been nullified. I have a save. And I got to draw again. Wow. Ooh, you save someone. So if you're safe with this helmet, if this helmet wins its game, you can save someone else in, uh, that uh, has failed. That's this right. Week. Okay, so now he's picking another helmet. I have the Arizona Cardinals. All right, ah. so the Cardinals. Drew Giants. Stanton, Giants. Uh, Giants yeah, yeah, Drew Stanton is back at the helm. Well, you keep it. It's Giants. Cardinals at home, four-point right. favorite against the Giants. Do you keep that or do you want to throw it back? Four-point favorite. Yes. Why is the Reaper sure. laughing? That's two dollars, Reaper. I can't have a Grim Reaper around here laughing. Like Reaper, Reaper. Where's Reaper? Hey, you. you get fined two dollars every time you fall out of character. $2. You can't have a laughing Grim Reaper. Are you keeping it or not, Roy? Are you Roy? talking? Yes, I am keeping it. Okay. Are All you right. guys remembering that we're on a radio show here? All right, Mike. Yes, go, go I ahead. shall pick. You picking for Mina here or for you? I'll pick for me, and then uh, I'll go for Mina. My golden helmet of life just expired, so I have to go uh, to the bucket. The golden helmet of life is three bye weeks where you don't have to deal with any of this mess. I have any team. Wow, okay. nice. That's that's pretty damn good Can for me. you guys me? take some of the writing off of the helmets next year? Like, I hate that every time we reach into this, it's writing, and then we need to explain something. I'm going to go with the Carolina Panthers. All right, so any team. So the Panthers are an 11-point favorite against the Bucks. Is that the biggest? Uh, you don't want the Patriots against the Bills? No, I want the Carolina Panthers. You don't want the Ravens against the Colts? I said I want the Carolina Panthers. Okay. he was pretty clear yeah, on what he, he wants. wants. Yeah. All right, very good. Mm -hmm. All right, now I shall draw for Mina. Mina, you're on the line. Your mic is hot. Don't curse. Ah, the Raiders are at the Eagles. You don't want the Eagles? I'm ready. I don't want Nick Foles. I want Again, the Carolina Panthers. Again, he said the Panthers. Okay. We all heard it. Okay. Oh, this is apropos. Mina, the first helmet I have drawn is the Seattle Seahawks. Oh, she, wow. doesn't, she doesn't believe in that team. They are at the Cowboys. She doesn't believe wow. in them. Let's see her confidence She doesn't level. believe in them. She's smart. I'd keep it. Zeke is back. Put it back. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, wow. rational over emotional. Yes. It's an emotional head because this way I win either way. Wait till you see what's coming out next, though. Oh, no. oh, you have any team by double digits. Back. Any team by double digits. You got. You need oh. a team to win by double digits. So the Ravens okay. are a 13 and a half point favorite. The Panthers are an 11 and a half point favorite. The Patriots are a 13 point favorite. The Texans are a 10 point underdog against the Steelers at home. And the Eagles are a nine point favorite against the Raiders at home. Say the Chiefs. Even though uh, Mike picked the Panthers, I could hypothetically pick the Panthers. Yes, because yes, you have yes. the Panthers uh, by double digits. Yeah, you could pick them. The Chiefs are also a 10 point favorite at home against the Dolphins. Mm, yeah, I don't like that. Oh. All right, I'm going to go. Who are the Ravens playing against? Ravens are on Colts. at home against the Colts. They're a 13 and a half point favorite. That's the one I would take. And yeah, I don't even like I'm the Ravens. Gonna... I know. The Colts are so bad. Um. I am going to do the Panthers in okay. line with Mike. Right. the Panthers, too. So you like the Panthers more yeah. than the Patriots at home against the Bills. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Why, why, why is he so hung up on He's this? really like selling hard no. against the Panthers, no, man. I, no, actually, the, the reason I'm doing that, uh, Reaper, that's another $2 for dropping your uh, sheet. Your, what, is, what do we call that? What do we call that thing you're holding? You call it a sheet, and that's a fine. It's not. I, I said the sheath holds the sword. I Mina, mean, help me out here. What's the thing? A sickle? Is it a sickle? What a reaper carries? It's a sickle. Yeah. Okay. So uh, she just it just dropped its sickle. Right. Um, the reason I'm doing that, I'm not doing that to, to to try and talk you guys out of your picks. I'm doing it to explain to the audience who the big favorites are. Right. Yeah. Thank you. It. Thank you, it. Mina. We appreciate it. Thank you. It's apparently not a sickle. What is it, Bill? Skeeth? Wow, that's fine the, for everyone. That, that's the word I was looking for. All right, go ahead, Stu. God's pick from the bucket. I'm rummaging around in the bucket. I like to rummage a little bit. Rummage. Rummaging. 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 I have a helmet, Dan. There's a helmet in my hand. It is blue. It's the New York Giants. Uh, I'm going to throw that back. I mean, why would anyone keep that? You're going against Drew Stanton. Oh, I am? Yeah, Blaine Gabbert, who wasn't terrible, but got benched. All right. Well, I threw it back already, so there's nothing I can do. I'm rummaging, man. I got a helmet. Oh, not good. I have the Buffalo Bills on the road against the Patriots. Well, everybody's scared of the Bills around here. I mean, everybody out here, like, it seems like a good pick based on how Mina and... and is Tyrod back? Who knows? All right, it doesn't matter. All right, so I got the Patriots. I'll take them. All right. Well, we're head-to-head. -head. You there sure? We're head-to-head. -head. you sure you want the Patriots? Yeah, yes, you, don't want to, you know, you don't try to get the Panthers or something? No, I try to get <laughs> What would I have picked if I had gone in here again? I picked the Patriots. What would I have picked if I had gotten here again? I would have gotten the Bengals. If I'd gone back in. Good job.
Payday! Payday! It is payday! Larceny bourbon, people. If you are relieved because the bucket of death is now out of your life for the year and you want to celebrate with something and someone, Larceny bourbon is the way to go. Tell them, Stu Gatti. Yep, it's the perfect thing to celebrate with. We love it. Larceny weed at bourbon, man. They are the key to smooth. They really are. I love Larceny Weeded Bourbon. I'm going to enjoy some today on the golf course. Just like a scout knows how to pick great players, their master distiller hand selects only the finest barrels for a true small batch bourbon. Larceny Bourbon is award-winning and made with more wheat for a smoother taste. It's bourbon making at its best. Get caught in the act. Unlock the smoothness of Larceny Bourbon today. Try some for yourself. Think wisely. Drink wisely. Larceny Bourbon. Bardstown, Kentucky. 46% alcohol by volume. Felicidades from the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Get in touch with the show anytime to the 1-800-Flowers Twitter feed at Levitard Show at Stugat790. Dan, it is time for Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contract. Well, I am going to give you the straight talk right here about Adam Schefter. All right. I'm going to give you the straight talk. Adam Schefter... Uh, Men a year ago signed a contract uh, in, or extended a, his responsibilities by becoming also a basketball reporter. Adam Schefter, it's pretty clear, is a great reporter, uh, but he's known as a great football reporter. And it seems like Adam Schefter wants to be more than just a great football reporter because he's doing stuff with basketball. But when he did stuff with basketball, I thought that was curious. I think Mike Ryan said he'll be better than Woj. He's going to conquer everything. And I'm like, no, that's not quite how that one works. you got to mm-hmm. build sources over time in a sport and there's nobody better at it in the history of journalism in sports than Adrian Wojnarowski. I agree with Mike at the time, but I think the threat of Adam Schefter really made Woj better. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. We'll get to that in a second, but before we get into the threat of Adam Schefter making Woj better, <laughs> um, and you may be right about that. Yeah, that's what's a poll question. Yeah, you understand my confusion though, because Adam Schefter doesn't just want to be a great football reporter. He wants to, he wants to evolve his game. Like he's, he's a, as good as there is, right? Like great football reporter. If I say one time, it's like him or Glazer, Glazer. Good save. Uh, that's it. And so he's trying to expand. Mort, yep. Mort, that's right. Excuse me for forgetting Mort. You should never forget Mort. And so what you have is a situation where I just saw on the screen that Adam Schefter talked to Reggie Jackson and he talked to Reggie Jackson about his relationship with Jeannie Buss. Right, which is fairly shocking. Hmm. But it's not as shocking as what I thought it was, which is Reggie Jackson of the Detroit Pistons was having an affair with the vice president of the Lakers. <laughs> like, I mean, right, yeah, I got yeah. confused. You understand why I would get confused course, by that? Yes, yes. Like, Adam Schefter's done a podcast with Reggie Jackson. Reggie Jackson is, like, first of all, I'm confused because Adam Schefter's doing basketball of any kind. I thought there might be a Reggie Jackson in football that I was missing. That'd be tampering. Yeah, I mean, that is. Yes, you're not allowed to reach out and feel people who are contractually with someone else so but here's the backstory so i see on the screen adam schefter talks to reggie jackson about his relationship with jenny bus genie bus oh man i fixed it before anyone said anything yeah, i wasn't quick enough my fault <laughs> i wasn't <laughs> quick enough i want is that why you're that so quick fine for you is that you why you're here. so quick you want to get in here to find me before i've made the mistake even if it's not or before right, i've I, noticed the mistake i'm willing because if i find you for something that i shouldn't find you for i have to pay but i am willing to risk my own money to try to get you yes uh, yes i've noticed that <laughs> yeah have, I, I have noticed that yes because well here's what's funny about what happened last segment still got stormed in the other room in full waddle <laughs> <laughs> tired of the fine system and then he paid five dollars and he's yelling at everybody i'm like but you're the one who's always first punishing me every time with such zeal that i don't even have time to make the correction <laughs> true so r- do you guys understand my confusion adam schefter is a football guy i thought there was a reggie jackson in football no adam schefter is now doing basketball oh clearly it's reggie jackson from basketball wait a minute Reggie Jackson had an affair with Jenny Bu- Jeannie Bus. Oh, good save! <laughs> Reggie Jackson had an affair with Jeannie Bus of the Detroit Pistons, the former Oklahoma City Thunder guy. But now it turns out that no, it's Reggie Jackson, Mister October. So here's the sound from Adam Schefter's <laughs> podcast about Reggie Jackson of the New York Net Yankees. This is Know Them from Adam. Oh, man, I wasn't quick enough. Right. Reggie Jackson of the New York New York Yankees <laughs> evidently had a romantic relationship with Jeannie Buss. 
I know Jeannie Buss very well. Uh, mm-hmm. In fact, I've dated her before she met Phil Jackson. We dated uh, when I was with the Angels. I was good friends yep. with her father. Wow. He did not like Phil Jackson at all. Jerry Buss didn't? Yeah, no, he did not. Jerry West Jerry West didn't either. Wow. He, he, was, not, he was not a very well-liked guy. <laughs> Phil was Phil was odd. He's he's hmm. he's an odd guy. I mean, Schefter killed it there. <laughs> wow, huh? And it's good information. Like that's good information. Hmm. Yeah, but let's just isolate Schefter's contributions to this podcast as Reggie Jackson tells us something that we all reacted to the way Schefter did. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That is Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage of America's largest and most dependable. Uh, what's more shocking here, that Reggie Jackson, like, which is more shocking, that Reggie Jackson was dating Jeannie Buss or that no one likes Phil, that Reggie Jackson is revealing that no one in the Laker organization except Jeannie Buss liked Phil Jackson? Wow. <laughs> That is Straight Talk. It is brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage of America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. The number one show in the history of shows. Uh, I want to circle back around here on something uh, serious because, uh, and this is not surprising, like I've been getting calls for, you know, two days. ESPN kind of leaves us largely alone. It's been an enormous blessing, really. Like they have... They've given us so much freedom and support, and and it's been shocking to me, frankly, because I didn't want to work for ESPN. I never wanted to work for ESPN, and my chief concern was sort of, I mean, this is deeper than anybody wants to go, son of exiles, don't want restriction on freedom. Like, just don't want it. Don't want it in my life in any way. Like, freedom really matters to my family. My parents sacrificed everything so that I would not have to make a single single compromise, okay? They sacrificed everything to get to freedom so that their kids would not have to be compromised on the things that they believe in. So they made all the sacrifices so I wouldn't have to make a single one. And so right now I'm in the middle of an uncomfortable storm. It really feels cruddy. It feels cruddy, right? Because management here at ESPN would like me to leave Rob Manfred alone. And I get it. Rob Manfred, like that's not what happened to Rob Manfred yesterday. He's not cool for baseball. Like, it only serves us and ESPN. It doesn't serve our partner, Rob Manfred and baseball. Right. There's no way that that serves him. He decided, The only reason we got him on is because the network has a relationship with baseball. Otherwise, why the hell would he come on a show? But anyway, so ESPN has built this into what can be argued as the largest sports radio show in America. They've built it. They've given us that power. I value and respect the people who have supported us throughout the way with the discomforts that that power can create. And now... I'm being told to back off. And the answer is no. The answer is no. I want everybody. I know that the nation doesn't want to hear about this. This is old news. And ESPN keeps recycling. Like keep, the news cycle is such that it's not just ESPN. It's everybody. Things stay in the news for a minute. We give them shame, shame, shame. And then we move on to the next person. And we're going to give shame, 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 topic du jour. And they want me to move on because this is an old story. Who the hell cares? Who the hell cares? It's an old story. Stanton, like you could talk about it off the news. Stanton was traded, Yankees, but now there's no news. And I'm saying, no. No. Now, what happened? What did I just you do? You hit the death so hard that it, uh, <laughs> it triggered the Hakeem Knicks laugh. <laughs> Is that all it triggered? Yeah. 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 I get mad about this, man, because the, an- the answer you care the, about the, Miami. The, the answer's no. I want everyone to be. And people think this is look at me, Stugat. This is thank you. This is that people think that this is look at you just me. Just slammed a table. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, fair enough. Right. In fact, I should probably get a fine for that. Right, That's you're got, okay today. No, I should get a tone fine for slapping the table. You're fine. But I want to explain this to people in a way that understands, in the way that they understand it, because I think the tension is interesting. We're all in the big business of sports, and sometimes those interests are aligned, and sometimes they're not. And I would understand why baseball and ESPN wants me to move off of this. And the answer to both of you is no. Demand once more money. You guys are made uncomfortable by that? The answer is no, man. I'm not made uncomfortable by it. Well, I don't feel like there, I feel like there's discomfort in the room. Like I feel, 
Man, you have. If you're going to give me this power, you have to trust me with it. And and I you trust give it, you with it, no, man. No, I'm getting you. a week I'm, off I, either way. It don't matter. I mean, <laughs> and you're not going to get suspended, right? You're not going to get suspended. I prefer to be paid, but I mean, you'll handle that. And listen, but, I'm just playing out the string here, man. We got an hour and twenty minutes to go. Right know? before the holidays, you've been trying to crawl to the holidays oh. for about but for about a month. Yeah, because that's another thing. Stugatz is tired of like talking to the Pittsburgh affiliate. All his dreams are coming true, and Stugatz is driving Jeez. home at two thirty. He's like another one of these. Like, be careful what you wish for, man. It isn't my mistake. I called them Friday, did the Pittsburgh affiliate, and I told them if the Steelers lose the game because I predicted them to win by ten. I said if they lose the game, you can have me back on on Monday, and everyone can get mad at me and not get mad at you. And I forgot I said that. And so Monday I was driving home, and lo and behold, my phone rang. I'm telling you, man, these affiliate hits. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing thousands of them. Are you done with it? Are you done with it? Are you finished with the affiliate <laughs> hits? I think I got one today. <laughs> I Mike, can you help me out with this, please? Stugatz, it's all his dreams are coming true, and Stugatz doesn't want any of it. He's complaining about having to do Mike and Well, I want the money. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean. well, the right. <laughs> one in hundred flowers, people. It's the holidays. If you're miserable, if you've been emotional, if you're fighting with your company in baseball, send people one in hundred flowers. That's the other thing, though. Like they don't want this content, but at the end of the content, there's one in hundred flowers. They don't want this content, but it's all over ESPN's television screens, all over the place. You're a topic on first day. Unbelievable, you are a man. topic no, on first but day. The, and it's hugely uncomfortable. It's hugely uncomfortable, man. Because I respect. Love you, 970 ESPN. It's it's Adam a, Crowley, I think it is. He's a good guy. He really is. He's a good host. I enjoy being, you know, and now we're talking about a weekly spot on the show. And I'm just telling Adam, I better be paid. Freebies are over. Anyway, right now, when you order the beautifully crafted holiday flower tree, you'll get 20% off. The holiday flower tree is elegantly designed with fragrant greenery, roses, mini carnations, and a merry red bow on top, making it a truly one-of-a-kind gift. To get the gorgeous holiday flower tree for 20% off, that's the deal today, go to 1-800-Flowers.com, click the radio icon, enter code DAN. It's a great deal. It's 1-800-Flowers.com, code DAN for 20% off, but... You better hurry. The offer ends on Friday. Felicidades to you and your family from the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. Cash more of the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats, 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and ESPN U. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I'm so happy, I feel like I can fly. Disclaimer, you will not be able to fly by switching to GEICO. This is against the laws of physics and nature. If you find yourself flying, please seek professional and or medical help immediately. In the unlikely event you find yourself flying, you might be a superhero or a pigeon or a superhero named Pidge Woman who was bitten by a radioactive pigeon. If you are indeed Pidge Woman, GEICO retains all licensing publishing rights in the event Pidge Woman the movie becomes a top-grossing Hollywood blockbuster. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Don Levitard. Man, I hope the future looks like whatever Elon Musk is imagining. Imagining is is the right word, because he ain't doing anything. He's just thinking about it. I don't think it's fair to say he's not doing well, anything. Well, what's he doing? I mean, Stugatz. Uh, seriously, what does he produce, though? Tesla? Well, besides that, the ideas are great. <laughs> the ideas are great. Great ideas. The execution. I mean, uh. of course, because they've never been done before. Oh, well, let's go. Okay. This is the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Is an orc common knowledge? Is what an orc is common knowledge? <laughs> I've been told it's actually closer to a goblin. I don't think that's common knowledge, the definition for orc. Sure it is. I don't think so, Mike. Is it on the poll, Guillermo? Have you put it on the poll? Do you know what an orc is? <laughs> Have you done that? Because you've been sliding on the polls because you're mailing it in. Uh, that's been outsourced to Allison today because someone's not having a baby yet. So I'm doing his work, too. Okay. Oh, wow. So, so Allison, the, Allison is that. learning for the first time that she's supposed to be doing polls. Look, she's looking at me like she doesn't know what we're talking about. You're supposed to handle the poll questions. I, I, Do we have any poll questions today or did we just forget all our responsibilities around here? Has anybody been putting polls on? Let me check. Hold on. Uh, well, go ahead and do your sports center. I'm sorry, I interrupted. No, no, you're good. I'm checking to see. Um, yeah, we do have one. Is uh, is Butch Davis jealous of Lane Kiffin? Yeah, the bull, the polls haven't been done today. No, but that's Allison's handling other stuff. That's not Allison's fault. I don't feel like that's Allison's fault. I did two polls. There's actually yeah, there is a second one. Did they make 19 year olds who look like Bam when you were a kid? Okay, put it on the poll. Yeah, we stopped doing polls. Yeah, we okay. Put it on the poll, please. Do you know what an orc is? Somebody, anybody. 
Go ahead, do the Sports Center flash. All right, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Chris Sims going to join us in just a second here. This is very exciting. He's going to reveal to all of us his 56 best quarterback in NFL in the NFL. Very, very exciting. He'll join us in a second. <laughs> Here's your Sports Center update. It's not that exciting. No, it is. 56 is is that's an exciting number. He'll join us on the Shell Penzoil performance line. I'm trying to sell it. That wasn't a very good job. No, well, ne- your- well, neither was very excited saying that seven times the way you did when you're not very excited. I'm not at all. Here's your Sports Center update. Chris Paul left the Rockets 122 116 loss to the Lakers. He left the game early with a strain left abductor. Guys always hurt. Chloe Kardashian has confirmed that she is pregnant with Tristan Thompson's child. And finally, this guy, Elon Musk. Ask, accidentally tweeted out his cell phone number to his 16.7 million followers. So smart. Domino's extended their carryout offer from Monday to Thursday to every day of the week. Carry out large three topping pizzas for $7.99 today, tomorrow, or the next day. You get it. It's every day. Ask for this offer. Availability and charges may apply. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. He is an NFL analyst for Bleacher Report. He is the host of the Sims and Left Go podcast. He's been kind enough to sign a 70 day contract with this show because he said that Blake Bortles was the 70th best quarterback in the NFL. And so we made him produce the list. Now he's producing it every day for 70 days. <laughs> you think he regrets signing the contract? Do you? Do you do regret? You, be Chris, Chris, because now it's become an annoyance. We're in your life. We're always calling. You've got to make a phone call every day for 70 days. <laughs> Has it become a terrible burden already, even though we're only on number 56? <laughs> it's not a terrible burden. Is it a pain in the butt a little bit? Certainly. Yeah. But... <laughs> Since you guys are so cutting edge on the radio, and I'm trying to build my brand over here, mm-hmm. uh, it's a lot of fun. No, it really is. I mean, is it, it, you know, I'm having fun with Allison every day. We're texting back Allison Turner, figuring out what time I can do it, when you guys can squeeze me in. Uh, is it? It's not a burden. It's okay. You guys are cool with me. To be clear, though, just so I, I make sure everyone hears this correctly, you're using us. That's fine. Uh, a little bit. You're using me too, right. aren't you? We're this using isn't you. A use. Too. I'm right, totally right. fine with you using us. I just wanted to make sure. I don't think you enjoy it. I just think this is good for your brand. And, well, and, that's, and, fair. and that's fine. And that's that's totally fine. fine. No, no, he no, enjoys but, pieces but, of it. But, but and I left do, I, When I used to be in the car a lot more and drive home from work, I used to guy. I used to listen to you guys all the time. You know, now of course I'm working a lot of the times when you guys are on on air. So uh, I've always had mucho respecto for your show. I I love it. So it's a little different and fun, and right. I'm glad to be a part Guillermo, of it. Is Lefko jealous? Oh, he is because he's. <laughs> what did you just say with respecto? Mucho? I don't res- know. Mucho that, respecto. Yeah. That's no. That's yeah. oh, no hold, hold on. Okay, I just. Hold on. You never heard that? Mucho respecto. I I heard. I mean, it. come on. Yes, I've heard. Yes, I know what the phrase mucho respeto means. I don't know what, what that mucho mean? respeto means. Your lack of respect. I'm just silly. I don't know. I'm an idiot from New Jersey, man. What can I say? Sorry. And that's a oh, fine I'm, note. Oh, I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you, Chris. An NFL analyst for Bleach Report and the host of the Sims and Lefko podcast. Yeah. What did you want to ask? Him? Well, Lefko is it? Who is Lefko? No, is he jealous? Is he jealous of you that you get to be on our show? Yes, Lefko is extremely jealous because he is a huge fan of your show. I mean, he is prime millennial Bleacher Report material. So all the guys you do on, you know, all, all the different so- social things out there, whether it be Instagram or whatever else, he follows you. He's all over you. So he was the one that first alerted to me about you guys talking about Blake Bortles at 70. And he was like, hey, dude, you need to make a list because I think they're going to be calling you. And then, of course, that's how it started. All right. Well, let's, let's do this then. <laughs> And without further ado, number 56, the 56th best quarterback in the world, according to Chris Sims. This is following 57, Ryan Mallett, 58, Matt Castle, 59, Paxton Lynch, 60, Landry Jones, 61, Nathan Peterman. And there are a whole lot of people here you have not heard of. Number 56 for Chris Sims is... Deshaun Kaiser, Cleveland Browns. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Oh, wow. That, that feels a little higher than it should be. Uh, he's been pretty higher. terrible, huh? 
He's been pretty terrible, yes. But, he, you know, I, he is a rookie. He does have some physical ability. He's big. He can run. Uh, he does have a pretty strong arm. I mean, he has a big-time arm. Is he refined totally? No, certainly not. And he is playing on the Cleveland Browns, so not the greatest support staff in the world. But he, he's, got, he's got potential. There, there's room to grow there for him. Chris, thank you, and enjoy the holidays. Thank you for fooling around with us. Are uh, the Nances coming over for the holidays, or what? <laughs> no, no, sorry, they're not coming. <laughs> any holiday cards? Did Jim Nance ever get the family any good gifts when you were working? When you were, he was working with your dad? Ah, uh, he did. I, I think he was pretty good gift giver. I know, you know, he's he's into the wine, the wine world, and I know he always would send a few bottles of wine to dad, and dad always appreciated that. Uh, and and but you wanted to send him straight to hell. Not, not him, the wine. <laughs> well, until this past year, yeah. Okay, very yeah, good. Okay, good. Uh, we'll talk. Enjoy the holidays, Chris. Thank you for being you on too, with us. You guys. Be good. See Thanks, Chris. Uh, uh, Stugatz, why did I see a piece of paper that you had written, a note that you had written uh, or somebody wrote that said, no Lee, no me? What was uh, what was that sheet of paper that I? Oh saw? yeah, that reminds me. You went on uh, outside the lines right after the show yesterday. Was it? Uh, Who's the gentleman that hosted the show? He was filling in for Bob Lee. He's very good. Very is nice. Ryan, Ryan Smith? Ryan Smith. Yeah, Ryan now, wait Smith. Now, wait a minute. Can I ask you a question? Would I yeah. have been fine there if I got that wrong when you're asking me the name and I don't know it? I think it's Ryan Smith. I'm not totally sure. Do I? Is that a fine? Possibly. Okay. But I asked. That's the thing. Like, you could ask us, you could stop and ask us, hey, here's the name. Here's a couple of clues and we'll I hope, for you. I hope I'm not insulting our colleague Ryan Smith by not knowing his name. It's not personal if I have gotten it wrong. I'm just getting a lot of names wrong lately. Good save. Now, with Ryan Smith, um, who's a very nice guy. He really is. I've met him a couple of times and he's a good host. But when you went on the show outside the lines, I'm thinking Levitar, Bob Lee. Whoa, this is like fireworks, right? And I just blurted out to the guys, no Lee, no me. If I'm asked to go on outside the lines, which I never would be, but if I were asked to go on outside the lines and Bob Lee's not there, I'm out. No Lee, no me. Because it doesn't feel as important unless Bob Lee's there. It's got to be Lee. Put that on the poll, Guillermo, or whoever's doing not doing the polls today. Put it on the poll. Does it feel more important if Bob Lee is there? Because I think I agree with that. Does it, does it feel more important if Bob Lee is there? I mean, you want to go on like Anderson Cooper if someone's filling in for Anderson Cooper? Oh, of course not. No, but I just don't mean on outside the lines. I mean anywhere in life. Oh. Does it feel more important if Bob Lee is there, wherever you are, holiday party, you know, uh, concert? That poll is up. Thank right. you, Allison. Good job. Um, but next to that note, yep. weirdly enough, mm-hmm. no Lee, no me. Mm-hmm. For some reason, and I don't think I can explain this exactly, Stugatz has a list of the uh, retired numbers of the Tampa Bay Rays. How did we arrive there? Like, right. why? What is It's like, honest to God, Stugatz, <laughs> it's like rummaging around in the uh, room of a mischievous, evil 10-year-old child who has no parents and is just allowed to do whatever he wants. It's great. Like an evil orphan. And, like, looking through your notes, it feels like being in your head. Yeah. No Lee, no me, combined with, for some reason... The retired numbers of the Tampa Bay Rays. How did you affi- how well, how did you arrive there? Well, Guillermo and I were discussing this yesterday because Evan Longoria was traded away from the Rays, and he's a certain Tampa Bay Ray Hall of Famer. And so, where was us- he traded? I didn't even catch that because I haven't been in the computer. Where, like, where? Who Longo? Yeah, where was Evan Longoria traded? San Francisco Giants. There you huh, go. I had no idea. So he was traded away, and it got us to thinking like. So I asked Bill. That would have been jarring next year when I turned on a Giants game and I just yeah. saw Longoria there and I'd be like, wait a minute, what the hell happened there? <laughs> You'll forget. It still might be. <laughs> right. It still might be a surprise. That's right. I will forget given how many things I've been forgetting. So oddly, I asked Bill if he thought Longoria's jersey would be retired and, and be hanging from the trop and, um, the rafters at the trop. And then we looked up, uh, who has the retired numbers for the Rays? Wade Boggs with a cup of coffee with the Rays. Wade Boggs. Don Zimmer, for obvious reasons. <laughs> what are the obvious reasons? That he died? He's no longer with us. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And Jackie Robinson, and, and every stadium has Jackie right. Robinson's number retired. And so we were discussing whether or not that's the saddest set of retired <laughs> jerseys anywhere in sports. Okay, put it on the poll, please. Also, Allison, Wade Boggs, Jack, uh, Jackie Robinson, and Don Zimmer as your retirement row. Is it the saddest retirement row in all of sports? And here's who's next. Dickie V. His number will be retired 
from the rafters of the trop. What number will that be? Uh, it just say a V. It may be some time, though. He's mad at them. He had a video yesterday. He was screaming at them outside a restaurant yesterday. Do we have they the sound Longorio. for that? Let me get it. Yeah, he was screaming. He's always in front of a restaurant. Put, put that, that on the poll. Put, put that on the poll. Is Dickie V always in front of a restaurant? It does seem like he's always in front of a restaurant, signing books, having drinks, being college basketball, calling for the end of the University of Miami program outside of a restaurant. But think about that. Wade Boggs. I didn't even know Wade Boggs played for the Rays until I looked it up yeah, yesterday. I, I know. I knew that he played for the Rays, but not very much. And I think of the Rays are third place on when I think of Wade Boggs, right? Of course, right. Uh, a, dis- a distant third place. I knew the name of the Dick Vital restaurant. He was always at the Broken Egg. But I found out recently he had to find a new spot. A couple years ago, that restaurant was broken up because it got acquired. So he had to find a new spot. Wow. So I don't know this new restaurant. Wow. The Broken Egg got broken up? And so now Dickie V has to find a new place to call for the shutdown of the University of Miami program while signing books? <laughs> Okay. Is the sound ready of Dickie V shouting about the Tampa Bay Rays? No, it's not ready. That's Give not the three up. seconds. All right. No problem. Uh, we'll do it. This next is segment. a future Tampa Bay Ray Hall of Famer. Okay. Well, okay. hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> we discuss what Dickie V shouted outside of a restaurant that isn't the usual restaurant that he's always standing in front of next. <laughs> the man wants more money. <laughs> Guy loves his Rays, man. And his food. Has your team recently traded Evan Longoria? You feel sad because your favorite player has been traded away. Someone in your love life or someone you love in general. Feel bad because the Tampa Bay Rays banners are sad. Make them happier with 1-800-Flowers. <laughs> you can do that with 1-800-Flowers. Tell them, Stugat. Yep, you can do it right now with a great deal. When you order the beautifully crafted holiday flower tree, you'll get 20% off. The holiday flower tree is elegantly designed with fragrant greenery, roses, mini carnations, and a merry red bow on top. It's fantastic, making it a truly one-of-a-kind gift. It really is. To get the gorgeous holiday flower tree for 20% off, it's simple. Go to 1-800-Flowers.com. You click on the radio icon, you enter code Dan, and boom, 20% off. That's 1-800-Flowers.com, code Dan, but you better hurry. The offer ends Friday. Felicidades from the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. If you missed any of the show, you can listen to all three hours of the Dan Levitar Show on demand in the ESPN app, plus our Miami-only hour that is before the show, and now you can subscribe to our Best of Podcast. It's all available in the Listen tab of the ESPN app. Dan, it is time to pump the brakes. Can we pump the brakes, please, on everyone telling me that Oklahoma City, the Thunder, they're no good. They're going to trade Paul George. We're 31 games into the season. They've won two straight. They've won seven of 10. They're 16 and 15. There's the sixth seed right now in the Western Conference. They're just two games back of being the three seed, which I believe they will be in the Western Conference. And their best game, when they're right and playing well, their best game destroyed the Golden State Warriors. Pump the brakes. I'm not saying they're going to beat the Warriors, but I'm also saying they're not trading Paul George, and they're going to go, at the very least, Western Conference semifinals in the NBA playoffs. That was pump the brakes. No one knows cars like the professionals at Advance Auto Parts, so the next time you need help finding the right tools or parts for your car, stop by. We'll be ready to help. Advance Auto Parts, let's get you back on the road. We will get, that was a good take. Thank you. On the thunder. We'll get to Dick Vital sound outside a restaurant in a second. Big Boy won last week against Colin Cowherd, or did he not lose? What was his record last week? Big Boy came through for us. We went, we have this weekly thing where we get a celebrity prognosticator. This time it's Big Boy of Outcast. And he has the longest run in the history of the show. Eight weeks he has done this. We've done this for years. Last week, Big Boy went 3-1-1. One, and one. Colin went 1-2-2. Two, and two. Now, here's the thing, Dan. Very interesting. The celebrities right now, win percentage is 563. Collins is 569. But we have an extra week of games. So all we have to do to beat Colin is win this week. If there's a tie or if Colin wins, the celebrities lose. So all Big Boy has to do is have a winning week, and we have had a better record with a random group of John Lovitz and Richard Lewis and Carrot Top, who was terrible. Carrot Top was terrible, awful. Like, just he was awful at radio, and then he he wanted to re he want he texted me 
he wanted a, a, a do-over. And I'm like, get out of here, man. Like, you lost and you were terrible on radio. So he texted me like, let me have another chance at this. I'm good with him not being good picking games. The thing he's supposed to be good at, which is being funny, he was not good at that. No, he was not very good. And so he's been texting me. He's like badgering me. I want on. I want on. But no, man, get out of here. To be clear, it's not just have a winning week. We have to beat Colin. So Colin can have a winning week. We can have a winning week. We need to beat him by at least one game. All right. All right. So why? But what is the difference? Do we just pick more games? Is that the difference in the percentages? Like, what's his record and what's our record? We're 39, 30, and 2. He's 36, 27, and 2. Now, he took off Thanksgiving week, and then someone threw in, like, a bonus game at some point for some reason. Okay. So we, we have, like, six more games. All right. Hmm. So all we need to do, we, these are big picks here, because... The reason that we do the celebrity prognosticator, and I, what are we? Man, we've done it for a lot of years, but the only time we did it against Coward, we've done it two years against Cowherd, and we're one and one. So this is the tiebreaker. One season we were better than Cowherd. He checks with Las Vegas people and yep. everyone else, and he really takes it seriously. Still, this proves our point, right? Yeah. I mean, the fact that it's this close proves the the larger point that we're trying to make, which is nobody knows anything. And point's been proven, but for a big week, and this is a big week because we'd like to finish it off and finish Colin yeah, off. There's him. no one we'd rather have picking these games. That's than right. No, no we one. feel confident. Big yes. boy, big boy is, is is he's a big boy. That's why we turn to him. <laughs> That's right. This is a huge rubber yes. match for yes. us. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. It's a very important time like that. We pulled out the big boy. I could see him arguing, saying that we're cheating, though, because every time someone loses, we just kick them away until someone wins. Like, it's not like we have uh, John Lovitz going against him every week, just right. some random person. Right. But we've refined it, making it even more random than that, because John Lovitz could just as easily go on an eight-game streak, uh, eight-week streak. That's my point. Now, there's a very precious little proof of that. <laughs> but in terms of, I don't think we've had a worse segment than the one with Carrot Top. It was terrible. I don't. I don't think in the history of celebrity radio and celebrity prognosticator. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm still reeling from it, man. Yeah, because Gronk Family Feud was pretty bad. No, no. But yeah. I'm talking about in the history of celebrity prognosticator. I don't think we've ever had something as bad as Carrot Top being terrible on the radio, terrible with his picks. Nothing was funny, and then him texting me, <laughs> "I want back on the show." <laughs> I'm like you're banned, dude. You're for banned li- for life. I mean. Maybe. There was a season we couldn't get rid of him, that he was on every week, and we were talking about his brother, no, Garrett Top. No, I know. That's right. Garrett Top. That's right. His brother's <laughs> Garrett, and his name is Garrett Top. Let's get to that Dickie V restaurant sound. <laughs> I'm absolutely sick. I can't believe it, and it sucks. It absolutely sucks that the Rays would trade Longoria, a genuine pro, a guy that gives us name recognition. I just wrote my check on my buddy and I for our season tickets every year. We pay Major League prices, yet they're going to give us AAA baseball. That's a joke. It's a joke. Next, they'll give away Mr. Archer. He's our other name player. Chris Archer, great young pitcher. Guarantee he'll be gone, too. Yes, it'll be a Christmas present for another team, and we'll get minor league players. But the prices stay the same. Shame on you, Rays. I'm really, really disappointed. Wait a minute. We feel you. Is that what I sound like? <laughs> Simply put, no one is better at talking into microphones. All right, bye. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Big boy going to join us in just a minute here on the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Going to finish Colin Cowherd off. Here's your Sports Center update. Chris Paul left the Rockets 122-116 loss to the Lakers game early with a strain left abductor. Chloe Kardashian has confirmed that she is pregnant with Tristan Thompson's child. And finally, according to Consequence of Sound, Eminem, Beyonce, and The Weeknd are set to headline Coachella. That sounds cool. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. Future is here with Taylor Swift uh, filming a video here on Miami Beach. Uh, I don't know whether that's what? A, that's a secret or not. Yeah, but there's been some funny stuff happening on that. Like Taylor Swift has tried to get close to Future, and Future is kind of like uh, not not get close to him in any meaningful way. Just sort of like it, she he's in her video, and he's been like standoffish. And so the second time she came to come see him after in the middle of the video, she had to explain, "Hey, it's Taylor." Like she had to explain it to him again. Because he's not understanding that he's in someone else's video. Right. <laughs> like, he's like, no, everybody, the yacht's for me, right? <laughs> Did it resonate the second like, time? He's treating know? Taylor Swift as, he, as, as if she's any other woman who's coming to try and get close to it. <laughs> you know, Big Boy has done that. Big Boy is, uh, 
He's got Boomiverse. It's available now. You can also check out his animated video in the South with Pimp C and Gucci. Tour dates, bigboy.com. He is our big gun. Now, he's, Big Boy's very nice, but if you, this story that I just told you about future, Big Boy, thank you for being on with us again. Does it, uh, does it sound like something? Do you even know future? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Future comes out of the same, uh, squad as we do, Dungeon Family. Okay, so what do you make of that? What do you make of that story that I just told you? Uh, he probably, he probably just don't know it. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, if you don't know somebody, if you do a song with him, I mean, and if somebody think you're supposed to know him, like, that just seems a little overbearing, but I don't know. He probably just don't know him. Either he gassed up, too. <laughs> oh, gas, baby. Is it gas, gas or is it, is it gas or is it zero? Is it, is it, did I say that right? Did I say, go ahead and hold on a second, big That's one. a fine. No, a it's not one. a fine, but yeah. it deserves the white guys. Go ahead and hit, hit, yeah. hit the white guys there. White guys! Well, white, 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 white. What happened? You just took a he bong hit? Yeah. What happened? What do you got? <laughs> yeah, what's that? Uh, it's all good. It's gas, baby. Yeah. It's just gas? Yeah. It's just straight it's, it's, gas? It's, uh, Christmas Kush. Oh, Christmas oh, Kush. The nice. Christmas the Kush. holiday spirit on marijuana. Excellent. Man. All right. So let's yeah. do it this way. This is yeah. tremendous. On Disney Radio, this makes me happy. We have brought in a high big boy from Outcast, and he's our big gun, and he is going to finish Colin Cowherd off <laughs> in our celebrity prognostications while high on Christmas Kush. <laughs> Are you ready to yeah, do this? Man. Are you ready to do this, big boy? We need you this week, man. This Absolutely. is it. You realize, have they told you the consequences Absolutely. of this, big boy? This is it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They told me, man. Yeah, All they right. told me. I mean, All, right. Right. All right. These are the big picks, look, 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 man. You're you're going to win the thing for us. He knows how big it is. It's why he broke out the Christmas kush, That's man. it. Yes. Okay. I yes. thought it's not the Gorilla Glue. No, he didn't do Gorilla Glue. What is your favorite strain? Uh, Purple. Okay. Uh, purple. It's a, it's, 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 a, it's a strain. It's, it's a train wreck. Train wreck and purple is called twerkle. Something new. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, so I want to ask Pretty you good. a question about Killer uh, Mike of Run the Jewels. He's mm -hmm. he. Uh, you you saw him before, man. You were trying to feed that a long time before anyone else was, right? Like you saw the talent there. I'm curious what you make of him in his 40s reaching the kind of success that you saw when he was in his 20s. Um, it makes me proud, man. Like, uh, like I, I tell everybody, like two of my, you know, greatest accomplishments in music outside of Outkast is signing Killer Mike and Janelle Monae, you know, and they both have made me so proud, man. And, you know, for all of us to be doing music at, at a high level right now, it's like, uh, uh, the musical X-Men, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'm just curious though, would you say, like, are the best rappers in the game right now, big boy, like approaching 40 or over 40? Um... Some some might say that from experience, catalog, um, accolades, sales, you know, things like that. Um, but you know, you just you know got to watch the young ones and and see how they evolve. You know, I mean, to be in the game twenty years is is is, is that's that's a that's a that's a milestone, man. And it's it's you got to keep changing. You know, keep changing and keep being brand new. Have I asked you before to give us the top three rappers in the game's history, according to Big Boy? Have I ever asked you that question? Um, I don't know. Okay, well, what's the know, question? What's the, what, what is the answer yeah. to that question? Um, I would have to say, I definitely have to say Outkast. You know, um, and it was one and one. Um, I love Nas. Um, and... Um, Maybe CeeLo from Goody Mob. Really? You went off the board? Yeah. You went off the board? Big Boy, yeah. nobody's putting that. Big Boy, I've never even heard someone put the top three. It's his list. Yeah, yeah. but he's on the yeah, Christmas yeah, Kush. Yeah. Doesn't matter. He can't be trusted. Yeah, no. Nah. No, nah, that's, that's when you speak the truth. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's swallow day truth. Okay. All right. Let's go. Let's do this with Big Boy. This is big. This is important. Get yeah. that bum carrot top out of here. Let's go. Let's do this. And now it is time for Celebrity Prognosticator. Let's win some money. If you're joining us, we do this every year, and this is a big one here. We go against uh, the best with our celebrities picking football games. And if we have a winning week against Colin Cowherd this week, we will have won for the season. So... Falcons at Saints. Saints are minus five and a half at home. You love the Falcons as your team. Who you got in this game? I'm going to have to go with the Falcons because it's, it's a must win, man. I mean, you know, um, I think, I mean, we, we'll, 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 
we'll play ball. I mean, if, if we lose, it'll be by three, but I think we'll, we'll win that. All right, Seahawks at Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott is back. He, uh, Cowboys are a five-point favorite. Who you got? Well, I'm definitely going with the Cowboys. Um, you know, the Seahawks, is that, that defense is like, man, what's going on? Bills at Patriots. Patriots a 12-point favorite at home. Who you got? Well, I'm a man that likes gifts, so I'm going to take them 12 points with the Bills because they always play the Patriots tough. Uh, sure. Raiders at Eagles. Eagles minus nine. Who does Big Boy have? Um, I'm going to go with the Raiders. Nice. And Steelers. Take them nine points. Steelers at Texans. Oh, my God. What happened? Did you? Eagles. What? Eagles. What? Who? You know. What? Uh, who? who the hell is that? Uh, you got to. Huh? It's your bum carrot top, you son. No, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. What is he trying to do? No, I, I, no I'm, I'm in this thing. I still got I got it. Big I boy, do you see that, that carrot top is getting in the middle of your business here? What do you, you don't, have you ever met carrot top, big boy? Yeah, I met carrot top. What's up, buddy? No, I don't want to hey, talk you know, to him. You doing, no, no, I don't want to talk <laughs> to carrot top. Carrot here. top, get the hell out of here. <laughs> no, big boy, I'm I met carrot top. Get on the line. That's right. Yeah, Carrot Talk know how to invade the session, man. Okay, but he's invading a I space. Would... What? <laughs> invade the session. All right, uh, Steelers. Carrot Top, get out of yes, here. Yes, please leave, Carrot Top. Thank you for, no, not thank you. Get out of here. Uh, Steelers oh. at Texas. Texas, uh, Texans. Why does it say te- Texans nine and a half? Who you got? Steelers. All right, that concludes our celebrity prognosticating. Thank you. Uh, big boy, you're going to win, and uh, we're going to send you another championship belt this uh, this off season, like the last one. I, 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 yeah, but I still oh, got, I'm in this thing still. No, you're not in this thing. Yeah. What do you mean <laughs> you're in this thing? You went like one and four. I you were in, terrible I on the in, radio. I was, you were, in, I was in it from the beginning. I, I know that, you were that, good that, many years ago, but carrot, you don't deserve to be on again. Like, what are you doing? You don't deserve. You were terrible on the radio, and your picks were terrible. My, I was not terrible on the radio. It's <laughs> all of you. It was great. And my God, my, I have my own rap name, by the way. I think, I think I'm going to be King Laquifa. That's my rap name. <laughs> <laughs> Both of you, get the hell out of here! Big boy like that joke. <laughs> <Big> boy, <laughs> but Big boy, don't like any joke. No, this boy. Yeah, at this point, the Christmas Kush will make you find anything funny. Get out of here! Both of you, everybody out of here! Ho, ho, ho! Happy holidays from the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. You can listen to the Dan Levatar Show with the Stugats 10 to 1 Eastern on ESPN Radio and you can watch on ESPNU.